Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Choreopolis United Methodist Church exists to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Our mission is to love unconditionally, to grow in faith, and to serve locally and around the world. We value authenticity so that our inner and our outer lives match up. The significance making Christ the center of all we do. Connection. We care for each other and for the outsider. Wholeness, which is peace with God, ourselves, our neighbor, and with creation itself. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who we come to worship this day. I ask that you greet one another. Uh, as we are here in the congregation, we have been, and as you are online, uh, give us a like or a share, a comment. Let us know that you're there and, and that you're worshiping with us. Uh, we have a few announcements today, a recital that will be happening this evening, and as well my devotionals on Wednesday uh, at 2 p.m. We will have a word about Thanksgiving, but later in the service, the big announcement for today is that we have a birthday today of our one of our members, uh, loved, uh, and, and she is, uh, I believe, in caring place at the moment, but uh, Lillian Wanner is 100 years old today. So, let's join together. Church. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Brian Sable. I'm music director here, wearing a very interesting mask. Um, these are the masks that the choir has been using to um, keep. We're going on a little field trip here because the bell choir is playing today. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, how can they practice if we are social distanced? So, here's your bell choir. back. There we go. Sorry, Jeff. I guess you are going to have to come with us. So a little bit about what takes um, to, to get a service going. We've got Jeff here running our camera. We've got the bell choir here. Lauren helped me move everything. We're just going to play for you now, and then we'll, we'll bring you back. Okay, this is Chinese of Great Joy.
call to worship and the opening prayer. We have come to worship the living God, not merely because we ought to, or because it is expected, but in genuine faith to offer our praise. Living God, meet with us now, we pray. We have come not merely for fellowship with one another, but to encounter the presence of the Almighty. Living God, meet with us now, we pray. We have come not merely for ourselves and our problems, but to reflect on the goodness and grace of Jesus. Living God, meet with us now, we pray. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, may our worship remind us that you are worthy of all praise. May we bring you back to the center of all Defend us 
We are grateful for the bounty that supports us. We offer prayers on behalf of many who know not such blessings. We pray that their eyes may be open to your presence. We ask that we may be ready to serve in ways that bring grace and mercy to the lives of many. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of pandemic, we pray for healing. In this time of upheaval, we pray for wisdom. In this time of lack and want in society, we pray for provision. In this time of uncertainty, we pray for leadership. In this time of separation, we pray for community. In this time of indifference, we pray for love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask this prayer in your name. And in your name we offer the prayer your disciples were taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, 
it was drivable once all four wheels were back on the ground. Did I take good care of the car? My mother said it never quite drove the same way after. <laughs> Something about always pulling to the left. We're given so many things in life. So many things that are provided for us beyond mere cash in the bank. And the living God asks us, what will you do with that that you have been given? Because we understand those to whom much is given, much is expected in return. Jesus begins his parable by saying, heaven is like, and it's in a list of several parables of heaven is like. And then he goes on to talk about the master who goes on a journey and leaves with three of his servants different amounts of money. And they are to do business with it. The, uh, the third takes it and buries it in the ground. And more about that later. We pray the prayer at the end of our prayer time, the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven as a reminder that when Jesus says the kingdom of God is like, he's not talking about the sweet by and by when we die and when we go to heaven. He's saying this is what the reign of God should look like when your life is immersed in it, in the here and now, right now. And he leaves this parable for them to think about how our lives and how our living can be different. Now, indeed, this is a, a special gift that is given. There are things that we are all supposed to be in our character, and there are things that we are all supposed to do when we're followers of Jesus. Here it's speaking about an enormous sum of money. But we all have special gifts in special ways, whether it be the financial wherewithal to be able to fund a ministry that's ongoing, to be able to fund a, a meal, a grab-and-go meal for a month, or to be able to fund uh, a recital that's going to take place here at the church. We, we all have uh, a different gifts and abilities. Some can do that. Some offer their time. There are folks that, that we owe a debt of thanks to who wear so many hats in the leadership of this church and are here so often. We have folks who have ability and strength who are able to use those in ways. We have folks who are able to, in their influence, in their conversations with others, are able to be a witness both to God and to what we're doing here. And to be able to say, this is a great place. There's, it's full of wonderful people who do wonderful things. Wouldn't you like to be here too? Those are gifts. Those are special gifts. And when obligation turns to devotion, Fear turns to joy when we do it not because we have to or because we're made to or because we're guilted to, but we do it because, you know what, we have a genuine love uh, of the Master. And we say, I want to say thank you in a special way for everything that God has done for me, and I'm going to do it in this way. 
Sometimes when we read through these scriptures of things that happened two and three and four thousand years ago and they use terms we don't necessarily use anymore, it can be difficult. Talent. One was given one talent. One was given two. One was given five. What, what's a talent? A talent of gold was worth 6,000 denarii. Does that mean anything? No. Denarii is a form of money. In Iraq, they still use the dinar. Dinar, dinare. What is 6,000 denarii in, in that period of time? It was 20 years' pay for a laborer. One commentator puts the smallest of those three gifts, gifts, grants, at a quarter of a million dollars. I don't know about you, but the last time someone offered me a quarter of a million dollars, I just kind of wasted it on jelly beans and donuts and stuff, right? No, I've never. I am willing to face that temptation if anybody wants to lay it on me. But we all have gifts and abilities. What does it mean? For, for us then when we say, who me? Who me? I, I am of meager ability, I am of meager talent, I am of meager finances, who me? And God can use you in a special way. Let me tell you, there was a ministry that uh, operated in one of the churches I served. It was wonderful. It had been in operation for years. It involved food. It involved serving food to people. Whenever anybody would, would come home from the hospital, three people in the congregation would each cook uh, a supper, an entree, a vegetable, a starch, a dessert. And for the first three days that that person came back from the hospital, for them and for their family, they received a meal. It was a great ministry. Loads of people who love to cook and have that gift of hospitality and service, and it died. Why did it die? Did we run out of people who like to cook? No. What happened? I'll tell you. The person who made the phone call who received the phone call saying so-and-so is coming home on Tuesday, then would look at a list of eight or ten people, all of whom said, I'm willing to cook, and just call three of them and say, can you cook for Tuesday? Can you cook for Wednesday? Can you cook for Thursday? Nobody felt they had the time or wanted to be the person who made the phone calls. We still had half a dozen or more people who wanted to cook. But none of them felt like that was their task or their ability. A person who is a shut-in sitting at home who does, has nothing more than to pick up the phone is able. Never say, my abilities are too meager person who's connected to all those folks and has known them for years can easily pick up the phone and say, hey Judy, can you do Tuesday? The Smiths are coming home from a hip replacement. What are we using our talents and our gifts and our abilities for? Last week we, we talked about seeing other people as God sees other people and we talked about you know, every person that you meet is someone for whom Christ died. Every person that, that you cross paths with is someone for whom Christ died, seeing other people as God sees other people. Today we're talking about seeing yourself as God sees you, as a person of worth and value. God's own creation, precious and wonderful. parable, as it's being told, takes a turn towards the end. The master comes back. 
And the master says, well, what have you been doing? And the first two say, this is what you gave me and this is how much more. Enter into the joy of your master. Wonderful, well done. Wonderful, well done. That's the good news. Then you get the bad news. Well, I was afraid that you're a hard taskmaster and you reap where you don't sow and I didn't know what to do and I just felt overwhelmed and so I went and I took it out into the woods and I buried it in the ground and here's what you gave me. I didn't lose any of it. The master is upset. <clears throat> over the wasted time, over the loss of impact that that could have had. It, it could have made money for the master. It could have also generated all kinds of good things in the wider community when that invested money gave birth to many different things. Why would he bury it in the ground? You, do you ever wonder about that? What is, is, is that being some roundabout way of saying something else? Is it a figure of speech? No, it actually means he went out and buried it in the ground. Bible scholars that I've had as professors have said the reason why it's buried in the ground is because then in that way he was giving it to God to protect. And if somebody came along and dug it up, it's not his fault. If he kept it in his own house and someone broke in, a thief broke into his house and stole it, he'd be responsible for it. But if he just buries it in the ground and someone finds it and steals it, he's free. The master is not pleased at someone a, who is afraid and doesn't know that you can at least put it in the bank. You can at least get a bit of interest off of it. But where's your lack of devotion to want to do something with what I've given you? Where's the impact that's lost, the lives that fail to be touched? I had a district superintendent at one point in time, early in my ministry, there was a group of us that were gathered together, the, all the newbies, all the greenhorns who had just come out of seminary and were only just getting their start. And we had all kinds of orientation that we had to go through. And one word that he said to me that stuck with me all my life till now, he talked about something that was entrusted to him and namely his family. And he, he was a person who worked hard for the church, who was always go, go, go. And he said to us, he said, I have these wonderful children at home who come to visit us at Christmas and Easter and the like. I, he said, I have, I have four wonderful children I don't know. Don't. Let it happen to you. Your work in the church is important, he said. The family that is entrusted to you is so important, so vital. The kingdom of God is not meant to be an experience of regret, but an encounter with joy. The special gift that you have is you and you give it to God and you give it to the world you give it to your family you give it to your church you give it to your community in ways that are a blessing to many and many people give themselves to the community that are a blessing to you amen, amen. this is the kingdom this is what the kingdom is like this is why those to whom much is given, much is expected.
because it is meant for us to be blessed, that we may be a blessing. And all God's people say, Amazing grace.
All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated for our moment for mission. Chris Strager is coming to have a word to say about our Thanksgiving and its developments. Thank you, Pastor Dennis. Good morning, everybody. It's been quite a week. There's been a, a lot of change going on, and I go back, uh, I see Terry sitting in the back there. It's an old military saying, Semper Gumby, always flexible, right? <laughs> so that's where we are there right now. Uh, due to what's been going on uh, in our county, in our state, and across the country with COVID, the spikes that we've seen, uh, as always, the goal was to keep all of the volunteers safe, and keep all of the food safe as it goes out to the folks that we're serving. And so the plan has changed just a little bit. Instead of having folks cook the turkeys at home and bring them here cooked, uh, we made a decision this week to go ahead and have the turkeys just delivered to us raw and cold, of course, and uh, thawed and frozen best you can to the church. And this week, Tuesday and Thursday, we will be cooking off all the turkeys. We'll be doing 21 turkeys, so say a little prayer for us. So what could possibly go wrong this week? Uh, but we're going to start cooking the birds on Tuesday morning between 8 and 9, and we will be carving the turkeys. For those that have volunteered, thank you. We'll be carving the turkeys starting at noon on Tuesday and noon on Thursday. And hopefully by close of business on Thursday, we'll have 21 birds cut up and put up safely in the freezer waiting for us on Thanksgiving morning. Uh, so that's the big change that we've had right now. For the volunteers, Candy, thank you so much for putting together the volunteer list and keeping that going. Um, we've tried to pare down the volunteers. Uh, for me, one of my favorite parts was having all the people here in a good mood, running around and laughing on Thanksgiving morning, but we understand that during COVID, that probably isn't the best thing to do. So we pared down on the volunteers to the absolute minimum required to safely get the mills going and out the door to the people we're serving. When you come in, I'm going to ask for if you want, have a ball cap, if you want to make a fashion statement with a hairnet, I have plenty of hairnets for everybody. Uh, mask, and you will be gloving up and washing following all, of course, food safety parameters and guidelines that we need to follow. What I'm asking now, if this was a horse race, I'd say we're coming around the final turn now. I still need three ingredients, if we could please, if I could uh, put upon you one last time. Uh, we still need the Pepperidge Farm, cornbread stuffing. We got the herb, herb season stuffing mix, but the cornbread is a little tougher to find. But Carol, we were talking about that, and usually it starts coming out about a week before Thanksgiving. So we're cutting a little close, but hey, it's stuffing. If I don't have the cornbread stuffing, we'll make do. But if you can see the uh, Pepperidge Farm cornbread stuffing, pick it up and have it here to the church, please, no later than next Sunday. That would be great. Uh, the other two items are cranberries. Brian, uh, we're going to be doing the cranberry sauce again, and uh, we calculated out it takes about 500 ounces of cranberries to make the, uh, the sauce, and also the potatoes. Uh, we have 10 pounds downstairs, we need 170 more pounds of potatoes, and that's going to be a little bit of a change on how we're doing things. We used to have a pizza party uh, on Wednesday evening, peeling the potatoes and getting prepared. We're not going to peel the potatoes this year. What we're going to do is leave them uh, skin on, and we're going to mash them with the skins on. So that eliminates, eight, and then, excuse me, eliminates about eight volunteers we would have needed for that night. It's not that we don't love you folks, but we're trying to keep everybody safe the best we can. If you have any questions, send me an email, give me a call. Candy's helping, Carol's helping with the shopping, and of course, Pat at the office. We're all there for you. So for the carvers, oh, one last uh, call. Uh, if you've already agreed to come and, uh, and carve on Tuesday and or Thursday, bless you. Uh, we'll be at church, please, at noon on Tuesday and Thursday. And we'll carve. Hopefully we'll be done by about four. So I'm hoping to get a couple rounds of turkeys through the oven. That's all. Thank you all so much for your support. We've already had quite a few who have already signed up. Uh, both from our church here, but as well, numbers that we know will go out for fire crews, ambulance crews, police stations, first responders, all, um, and folks in the tower, in the low-income housing. We, we have a great ministry here. We're still looking at probably over 500. Uh, so uh, that's, a great, that's a great goal. Our closing hymn, number 424. 
must Jesus bear the cross alone. <laughs> Exalted. 